and it's off of the leases on that pipe that you pay down the revenue bond over a period of time. The same is true with the efficiency investment. Uh, that we would either use the current efficiency Vermont mechanism or another uh, nonprofit to essentially establish a nonprofit performance contract that can upfront the uh, the dollar to do this kind of massive investment, and then would get a revenue stream from the property owner that would be somewhere between the in, the cost of their utilities before the retrofit and after and over a period of time to be able to pay off that revenue bond. There would be immediate benefit to those who uh, do get this work done in their overall costs, and that bond would be paid off over a period of time. <coughs> the, for an individual or a business to do something that had a four, that, that had a 10 or 12 year payback, is probably not something that they would make an investment because it's too long term. But if you have the state, which is looking at 20 year bonds and a much longer time horizon, it's much easier to justify spreading it out over that period of time uh, and with the trajectory of energy costs heading the way they are, uh, the, the uh, likelihood of being able to do that payoff and having benefit to those who make the investment is very, very good. Uh, we would expand uh, the capital. I talked about that in terms of reorienting some of the resources that we now make available for economic development investments. Uh, we will create a responsive agency of commerce uh, unlike the current uh, Secretary of Commerce, my Secretary of Commerce would not refer to his job as being a firefighter, which is what Secretary Dorn has described his job. Uh, and I understand where he's coming from. Uh, that is not going to get us to where we need to be as an economy, uh, and I would have a very different type of secretary. Uh, we would have increased efficiency and reduced uh, overhead in the state infrastructure, and Finally, uh, we would have leadership uh, that comes from a place of experience in being able to actually deliver on these promises. Uh, I had the good fortune of having a community that gave me a chance at 22 uh, to uh, be elected to Montpelier, and a mentor hired me at the age of 24 to run uh, marketing for a global software company. And then had Bill Clinton, who thought that I was ready at 29 to run a 6,000 person public enterprise. It's from those combinations of experiences that have uh, allowed me to touch on each of these different areas and has given me the understanding of what it will take to be able to actually implement them and to do so quickly. Our economy is not in good shape. We see young people that are fleeing the state and we have uh, small business startups on a steady decline. We have all of the basic elements in place to be able to succeed, but we need to have the leadership that can do the infrastructure investment, the access to capital, the investment in higher education, and is able to transform the way that we do work in Montpelier to be able to make it happen. Thank you so much for listening, and I would welcome questions. What do you mean by flat government? So, let, so less of a distance between the person who is looking for resources and the uh, person who is at the top of that pyramid. So, roughly how much do you think this this plan would cost though in general fund dollars or would you invest in? Because obviously the next governor that takes office is going to be facing hundred and hundred and twenty million dollar deficit from the get-go. Sure. How do you make those cuts and changes while making so the good news is that most of this, and I would say that the amount of actual general fund, new general fund dollars, we're probably talking in the one to two million dollar range. It's not big money. And the reason is that we will be employing uh, uh, capital instruments that just aren't used very often, right? Uh, things like revenue bonds uh, that allow us to get upfront capital, and in doing so, will have immediate benefits both in putting people back to work as well as uh, in the long-term jobs prospects for the state of Vermont. Uh, the other piece is that we have an incredible amount of efficiency we can do in the state of Vermont. Uh, and I know that largely because um, we can't find answers to certain questions. Right? When I, when I actually, so one of the proposals I put out there, which is something I know about because of the work that I've done, is switching to cloud computing. And this is a way of actually moving away from having our own 
servers and maintaining those servers and paying for the contractors on those servers. Uh, cities like Washington, D.C. and Los Angeles have done and saved millions and millions of dollars. Uh, but when I called the Department of Information and Innovation and I asked them how many servers we have and how much we spend on contractors for those servers, they said, well, we can only tell you that for the Department of Information and Innovation. You would have to call all the other agencies and departments to find out what they pay for. So um, what that tells me, and you don't need an MBA to know this, is that there is lots of opportunity to understand how we can save money, particularly on the back end, not where the rubber beats the road and people are actually working with Vermonters to solve their problems or start their businesses, but at the back end where there is a lot of costs in our state. Could you be a little more specific about some of the investments you were talking about, for example, in higher education and uh, in redevelopment of downtown areas, particularly brownfields. Do you have some numbers that you've generated? Sure. So what we know is that uh, we have approximately 4 million square feet of abandoned industrial space. And those of you who have uh, who've worked with me in the legislature know that this has been a passion of mine for a while. Uh, we passed a brownfields redevelopment bill uh, to try to create some uh, liability incentives to allow people to redevelop those uh, properties. Uh, but what I learned uh, in my 11 years in the legislature, especially comparing it to being in an executive branch position, is that you can, uh, as a legislator, you can set the table, but you can't serve the food. You can create all the regulatory environment that you want, but if you don't have people who are focused on it and committed to making uh, that kind of property available uh, for development, you're not going to see it happen. Uh, the other is that I would not put dollars, at least not at this point, unless there's some compelling case made. Uh, what I would do is pre-permit those 4 million square feet of an industrial space. And what does that mean? That means actually setting up a process where you go through whatever regulatory hoops and sign-offs you need to say, if you're going to do a development, that does this set of things is within these uh, and is within these parameters. You can move like that, right? In business, time is money. Uh, I believe strongly that the uh, that the environmental protections we've had in this state have actually been good for us. They have made sure that we have not made poor choices around our natural assets. Uh, and allow for people who want to quickly flip uh, real estate. However, in places where we know that we want to have redevelopment, I believe we can actually do that pre-permitting and allow developers to move very, very quickly.